How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we are going to be converting a log splitter's valve control body from auto kickback to manual due to a seized auto kickback assembly. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so in the shop today, I have this Country Pro 25 ton log splitter here that has a 208cc Briggs & Stratton engine on it. This was purchased here in Canada at Home Depot. And the issue my customer said he was having was the engine was running perfectly fine. The log splitter was working as it was supposed to. He went to pull back on the handle there to get ready to put another log there to split. And what happened was the handle got stuck in the reverse position and then the engine died out. And he said it was really hard to turn over the engine by pulling the pull cord. And he said it would not start because the engine rotated over so slow and said it sounded as if the engine was being overloaded. Now, log splitters may look like they're overly complex, but they're actually fairly simple machines. And I can walk you through how these machines work so that you'll have a better understanding once I start talking about certain components. So starting things off, you're gonna need a source of power, and that is where this CR950 or Briggs & Stratton 208cc engine comes into play. So you're gonna start this up, and as the crankshaft spins, it turns the hydraulic pump that's mounted to the back side of it. So there's the engine. There is the pump. The fluid would be pumped from the pump up this tube here all the way to this threaded port here. Then up here we have the split control lever, commonly referred to as a valve control body. And I could walk you through how exactly this system works because it's quite simple. So on the top and bottom of this valve control body here, we have these large tubes. Those are going to be three quarter national pipe thread right there. And then we have these two ports right here. Those are going to be half inch national pipe thread. And these are referred to as your working ports. So basically we have this hydraulic cylinder here. And you're gonna notice that we have a tube coming from here that goes to the back side of this cylinder. So with your engine running, the pump spinning and hydraulic fluid circulating through the hoses, you would come up to your hydraulic valve control right here. You're gonna hold this handle and you would push it forward because you wanna split a log. And when you push this forward, it opens up this working port right here, which allows pressurized hydraulic fluid to flow through this tube to the backside of the hydraulic piston or the hydraulic ram, essentially pushing the hydraulic piston out, extending the wedge to split your log. Now this valve body here is essentially going to be a three position. It's going to have the forwards, which we're in now, then it's going to have a neutral, which is right in the center. Now what this does is it releases the pressure off of the pump. So you can start your engine in the neutral position. And the fluid travels back through the valve body down this tube here, which then goes all the way back down to your oil filter right down there, which is marked with the flow going back into the reservoir. And this particular reservoir does take 6.5 gallons of ISO 32, so that's ISO 32 hydraulic oil. And as for the engine, if you are going to be putting oil into this engine, it all depends on when you're going to be using this log splitter. We are in the winter season now. My customer does say that he uses this log splitter all year round. So if I do an oil change, I will be putting 5W30 oil into this engine. So you got clean fluid there. And then again, that goes from the reservoir through this tube back into the bottom of the pump. If this valve body is seized in either the forward or the reverse position and the pump is under pressure, when you go to pull the pull cord of your engine, it's going to be incredibly hard to do. It essentially hydro locks itself. And I can walk you through how that happened when we talk about the reverse position next. You've split your log, the wedge is all the way up here. You're going to push the lever back, obviously, to return the piston. And this machine has what's known as a detent or an automatic kickback. So when you go from neutral into reverse, this arm is going to hold itself in position until the wedge here brings itself all the way back, at which point there is a spring in here with a hydraulic pressure relief system built into it that is adjustable by the spring tension that you can set for whatever PSI you wanna set without getting too complicated. When the ram pulls itself back to a certain position, the spring in here pushes this out and it's going to kick back into neutral. So essentially what you could do is move this forward, split a log, and then 
move this all the way back. And as the wedge is coming back, you're gonna reach down, grab a log, put it up here. And by the time you do that, the wedge is all the way in the back position and it's already kicked into neutral. So you're pretty much ready to go to split another log. Now the issue that my customer said he had was he was using this log splitter. It was working perfectly fine. The engine was running. He pulled the lever back to bring the wedge back. The wedge came all the way back. However, the lever seized in this position. Not only did it not kick into neutral on its own, he could not even grab a hold of this lever and force it forward because the detent or the auto kickback here was seized inside of this rear cap right here, which we're going to be disassembling in a moment. And I'm gonna show you basically how I converted this from an auto kickback to a fully manual valve body just by doing a little simple modification. But as I mentioned, uh, what happened was when that seized, the piston came all the way back, started to load up the engine because again, the engine's spinning the pump, the pump is pushing the oil and pressurizing it. and the oil had nowhere to go because this was seized in the back position. As you could imagine, my customer called, said the engine shut off and it would not start. It was super hard for that to pull over just like that. Whereas if I put it into the neutral position, thing starts up right on its own first pull but this modification is incredibly simple. And the reason we did this is because this manufacturer does not sell just the detent part itself. They sell the whole valve body all together and the cost was about $130. My customer really just wanted to get this thing up and running because he does have some logs to split and I can get this thing back to him today. So even though the modification on this has already been done, I am going to walk you through step-by-step -step exactly how I did it. Now on this Country Pro, it does have this plastic cap on the end. You are going to have to unthread that and it will expose the adjuster on the end of your detent or your auto kickback. Again, we've completely removed it so this one doesn't have it. Now don't worry about removing this just yet because on this particular model, again, this whole system was seized. And if you do have a log splitter that did have this seized detent or auto kickback, the next step you're going to have to do is to remove the two Allen screws to loosen this back cover here. This threaded Allen piece is going to be affixed to a piece of metal that also has a collar on the inside of here that has ball bearings on the inside. And the problem on this particular one is that system got completely seized up so that the valve in here could not move inside of this piece. So we're over here on the workbench and again, I already have things disassembled because as you can clearly see, I've made a cut in the kickback assembly, but I wanna walk you through exactly what you're going to see and how you're going to have to remove it if you have the same problem that my customer had here with the seized kickback assembly. So essentially what happens is you can't just grab this housing and pull it off the backside because the lock nut for your Allen key adjuster. That is what sets the spring tension inside of that kickback. The nut itself is larger than that hole. Now on the other side of this kickback housing assembly here, there are going to be some other parts that I'm gonna discuss now just so that I don't have to talk about them later. There is going to be a metal collar here and that goes over a retainer, a spring and another retainer. So that's what loads up this whole kickback assembly there. And that threads into the plunger that the lever pushes in and out of the control valve body to open or close the working ports. This system is incredibly similar to that of a pressure washer's unloader valve because again, that is going to be adjustable as well depending on how much spring tension you set. What you're doing is setting the bypass amount in PSI of your pressure relief system. Inside of this is going to be a spring. I'll take this all apart and show it to you in a moment. And then inside of this piece, there is going to be this collar here and this assembly or the shaft there is supposed to move freely on this collar, but you guys can see, and we have significantly cleaned the rust uh, since we've you know, started this repair. So this whole piece was absolutely filled with rust chunks of metal it was really bad and basically this shaft in here is supposed to move and it 
threads into the end of the valve plunger and it does have a hole that goes through it to allow the oil to flow. So it is going to look a little something like that. Again, this should be all fully assembled. There is the little spring that goes inside of there. Okay, so we're back on the log splitter. I have a magnetic tray. Everything's lined up in accordance with how it goes together. You're gonna obviously notice I have a bolt in there right now. We're gonna be talking about that. That is the manual modification that I made. So again, this was seized in the reverse position and this piece right here was threaded in to the inside of that plunger. So it's gonna look a little something like this and then you're going to have that nut right there. Now we've already established that the nut there is simply a lock nut. It's not actually part of the kickback assembly itself. And what you would do on a new unit is simply loosen that nut to then move your Allen key in or out. And as you can see here, this has two separate pieces inside of it. So there's going to be an outer collar and then there's going to be an inner piece as well. Well, on this particular kickback assembly, everything was seized. That piece was seized to the outer one. The outer collar here with the ball bearings is seized to the outer shaft there. And the lock nut was also seized to that Allen key. So what I did to remove this whole assembly and the housing with it was simply used a 7 8 inch wrench. And as I used the wrench to loosen that nut, the entire assembly threaded out from the plunger on the control valve body. So with this now unthreaded from the plunger, I was able to bring the entire assembly over to the workbench pretty much as you see it here in front of you. Now, again, because of that seized collar, we can't pull this housing off from that side and I need that housing to be reinstalled on the valve body after to prevent any leaking. And as we've already explained, I cannot pull the housing off from this side because the nut is larger than the hole on the housing. And unfortunately, the nut was seized to the Allen key threaded shaft there. Now, before we move on to what I like to call forced disassembly, essentially what we're doing at this point is going to check what size threads these are because it's gonna be important. As you saw, I'm using a bolt in place of this whole seized kickback assembly. So figure out what type of threads you have. In this case, it was an M10 by 150 and that is the thread size for that. That's gonna be important because the next step may damage the threads and then it'll make it a lot harder to tell what kind of threads those are. So once again, we have to get this housing off of the seized auto kickback. So as you could imagine, the next step is you're going to use a cutoff disc with this mounted in a vise. Once again, it is going to mangle those threads probably unless you used some wood or plastic inserts. And then using the cutoff zip disc, you're simply just going to cut the nut off of the end of this piece here. And we can now slide the end housing off of the seized auto kickback there. So at this point, get yourself a tape measure or some type of vernier caliper, any kind of measuring device and measure the length of the threads here. This is uh, just over half of an inch. I believe this measured about nine sixteenths of an inch. Now moving back over to the log splitter, because we measured the threads, I was able to find a bolt in my inventory that I already had. This is a Hillman 8.8 .8, and it is an M10 one and a half by 40. Now it is a little bit long, but that didn't really matter because the housing does come back far enough. So essentially what we wanna do is only thread this bolt in 9 16 of an inch or however long the threaded rod part was on your auto kickback. Before you thread that on though, I would highly recommend that you get yourself some oil and gas resistant Teflon tape. This is going to be the yellow stuff. As you can see, I've used it on the threads on the end of that bolt and we did mark the threads with a black permanent marker. So we only threaded that in approximately 9 16 of an inch. Now using a bolt with a little bit of Teflon tape inside of this valve plunger is super important because that plunger is hollow. Remember the valve kickback assembly here is also hollow. So this system has been designed for fluid to flow through the plunger into this kickback assembly. And we do have the housing that is going to bolt to the end of this control valve. So as you could imagine, once you start the engine, the hydraulic fluid starts to flow and build pressure, it will go into any area that is unplugged, which means hydraulic fluid would flow out of the end of this plunger here. It would fill the end housing, and then the pressure would start to build and it would automatically start to push 
the plunger forward, essentially engaging the ram there, sending your wedge towards the front. Additionally, because this particular end housing does have the plastic cover on it, once that hydraulic fluid fills this housing and begins to pressurize, it will pop the plastic cap off the backside. What ended up happening to me was I didn't use the Teflon tape originally. The bolt ended up threading out of the plunger. And just like I'm telling you now, hydraulic fluid was allowed to fill this housing. It started to pressurize. You don't have to ask me how I know because I will show you a funny clip that you're gonna see now. So what you're about to see is I start up the log splitter's engine and the vibration from the engine caused the bolt to back out of the plunger because the first time I didn't use any Teflon tape. You'll notice that the ram started to push forward and even though I put it into neutral, it still wanted to go forward. Again, that's because the fluid is building in the back housing until I go to put it into the reverse position and the plastic cap completely blew off the back side. So a little bit of stay dry on the driveway cleaned up that little mess and a little bit of Teflon tape wrapped around the threads of that bolt will prevent that from happening. Again, that is gonna seal up the hole on the end of that plunger, not allowing any hydraulic fluid to build inside of the back of the plunger. So what you'll see is once we put this all together, you're gonna see a clip of me running this thing and the valve control is gonna be set in the neutral position. Again, because there is no fluid going into that rear housing now it's not going to be pushing on that plunger like that so this machine will stay in neutral and it'll be essentially a fully manual control valve now there will be no auto kickback assembly a simple m10 bolt in the end of that with some teflon tape pretty much will get my customer up and running. I understand the video is running a little bit long for just basically installing a bolt. That's the only modification we've really done here. However, I did wanna take you through how all the systems work and basically walk you through it step by step. So at this point, we are ready for reassembly. Again, we don't need to use any of these components now because we are converting from an auto kickback to a completely manual valve control body. And the only other thing that I wanted to mention is we didn't have a shorter bolt. If we did, I would have used it. This was the length of bolt that I had that was the right thread size. The only point I would make now is if you are going to use a long bolt like I am, Put the valve lever into the reverse position so that the bolt is all the way as far as it can go that way. And then put your housing on to make sure that that seats. You do not want to see your lever push forward slightly when you put this onto there. That would mean that the bolt head is coming in contact with this and you'll be perfectly fine. As you can see, this is. And with the housing installed and those Allen screws tightened up, you can now install the plastic end cap there. That concludes our little modification now. So at this point, what I'll do is bring this log splitter outside and put this into the neutral position. So it's essentially going to be a nice 90 degree right there. We got a little winter storm coming in, so I'll get this thing fired up, let you guys see how it works. There you have it guys. So auto return or auto kickback to complete manual setup. Again, a little bit more risky doing it and you wanna be in control of that lever at all times. We do have a new complete valve control assembly on order because my customer did say that his wife and his kids do use this log splitter as well. So he does want the auto kickback fixed. Unfortunately, this one was so seized up we couldn't fix it. And I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video or not, but unfortunately, the company doesn't sell just the kickback as a serviceable part. So I told my customer, since this one was completely seized, we might as well cut it apart, do this quick, simple modification to get him up and running. And then once the valve body comes in in a couple of weeks, he can bring this log splitter back and I can simply swap over the valve body by just removing these fittings and installing the new one. 
Now, as for how to find the parts, you need a parts diagram. And to get that, you are going to need the model number of your equipment there. So this is a Country Pro 25 ton log splitter. And the model number is an LSP 25B. So I simply Googled that number and then I was able to find a parts diagram and I can put that up on screen for you now. On the right, you are going to see the photo breakdown of all of the parts that this machine takes. And we are going to be looking at part number nine. So going down into the parts numbers breakdown, you'll see that is the part number listed there. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I do have it highlighted in the video. So you can see if you wanna replace that and have this piece of equipment working as intended. And lastly, I did want to mention that I did Google a photo of that part number and the valve control body you're going to see does have the two ports on the handle lever side, which on this particular setup would put the handle facing the piston. Now, I did talk to a representative at YTL when I ordered the new part, and he said that these handles are reversible, and I can show you how to do that. It's very simple in the event you receive a new valve body with the handle in the wrong position. So these control levers here are quite simple. This is going to be your hinge down there and it's going to be a push or pull setup. Now this, just like the rear housing, does have this piece here that is secured via two Allen bolts. So all you have to do is remove those and you can spin the lever from that side over to this side so that it will end up being just like this. Because as you could imagine, if they do ship it with the handle facing there, that won't work. And I probably will have to rotate that handle 180 degrees once it comes in. TSC, Tractor Supply Store, does sell this valve body assembly, but only in the United States. So my customer basically had two options. We could either buy the original OEM for about $120 US, or he had the option of going to Princess Auto and getting an even cheaper valve body assembly that would most likely work. However, it may be of a slightly lower quality. Now, if you did want to go and purchase a cheaper valve body assembly instead of getting something direct from YTL International, then I'll give you the specs for this one. This pump is going to be a 25 gallon per minute or 25 GPM, and it is going to be rated at 3,500 PSI. It is a three position auto return or auto kickback, and it does have the two three quarter inch ports as well as the two half inch working ports. Again, this thing was like 120 bucks. My customer said, go ahead and do that. Instead of going to Princess Auto, which is essentially the Canadian Harbor Freight and me having to get an even cheaper Chinese one that maybe the quality isn't there. And I did look into that, but the reviews weren't all that great. Some people did say that the moment they hooked up the valve body to their machine and fired it up, all the seals blew out of it. So my customer didn't wanna take that chance. He opted for the modification now and the replacement later. But when you're a small engine mechanic in the repair industry like I am, sometimes parts aren't going to be available in a timely manner and your customer is going to request a quick modification to get that equipment up and running so that they can use it when they need it the most. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. A quick and simple repair to get my customer up and running again. I know that some people might not like the idea of a completely manual valve body assembly. And I will be honest, it does pose a little bit of increased risk when using it. But in this case, my customer is aware of the risks and did waive liability. So he gave me the full okay to go ahead and do this modification. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I do upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.